Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 G1 Gaming Edition video card. This is the video card. It's got a slick looking black and orange color scheme on the outer casing, which is made of plastic and doesn't look as premium as perhaps the price you paid for it. However, this makes the card a little bit lighter despite its size. The bottom of the card does have a metal backplate, which augments its cooling capability while adding strength and durability to the card. On top, the card has three 80mm cooling fans, aka 3x wind force cooler, and two aluminum cooling blocks, which are separated but connected using two hybrid copper heat pipes. The front half of the card contains the GPU and video memory, while the second half houses the power components. Note that there are two revisions of this card, and I've got revision 1, which is basically the same as revision 2, but doesn't support Gigabyte's RGB fusion for light show syncing. The 6 plus 2 power phase design makes the card a superior overclocker, with more stable voltage output compared to the Founders Edition, though it only requires one 8-pin PCI Express power connector. Both the Gigabyte logo and fan stop indicator on the side are RGB capable and can be controlled via Gigabyte's dedicated software. There are two SLI connectors on the outside edge. And finally, for output, there is a DVI-D connector, three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs, and an HDMI 2.0B port. This card is capable of playing all the latest games at 1440p and 60 frames per second but can achieve higher frame rates at 1080p on 100Hz and 144Hz monitors, and supports ultra-wide gaming across three monitors at 1080p and 60 frames per second. Installation in my gaming rig was quick and straightforward. After plugging it into the PCI slot and connecting the power cable, you'll want to download and install Gigabyte's Gaming Extreme Engine software to change the card's settings. The card has three different working modes, OC, Gaming, and Eco mode. In Gaming mode, you will be using the factory default overclocked state, while OC mode increases the frequency by about 20 MHz. When comparing this card's performance against the card that I had originally installed, the GTX 1060, this card does really well with high resolution output reaching a high FPS that can match or exceed the needs of a gaming monitor with a high refresh rate. OC mode does have slightly better performance compared to gaming mode in terms of FPS, but it's not terribly significant, so you can choose to run the card in OC mode all the time for a little better performance overall, or use it in the default gaming mode and save a bit on wear and tear. You can push the video card even further using manual overclock settings to reach about 2000 MHz on the GPU core clock and over 2300 MHz on the GDDR5 memory. Load temperatures run at about 65 degrees Celsius with the fans running at 50%. That's a speed of about 2100 RPMs. And the noise actually isn't that bad. But at 100% speed, the fans are pretty loud. The idle temps of this card sit at about 30 degrees Celsius, and the G1 shuts the fans off in 0 dB fan mode when the card is running cool. You'll also see the fan stop indicator illuminate when this happens. You can adjust the color and animation of the lighting effects in the software. Overall, this video card is a really good value when you take into account its speed, performance, and price point. It's one of the least expensive cards at this level of performance and can handle just about any game at high resolution beautifully. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.